What's going on, y'all? Live Moods here, back with another episode of Let Me Live. We have a week three that we've got to talk about here, two Monday night football games tonight, and a whole lot of interesting games. They're only going to continue to get more interesting. Like I said last week, we do have a Live Moods betting group chat right on the Baller Alert Instagram. If you guys want to help me build a betting community, slowly but surely, we're going to start getting into me being in that group chat all the time, sending you guys trends data, stats, bets, um, and hopefully you will also send bets so that we can maybe tail each other and maybe, you know, make some money together. I would love that. But we're going to jump into a recap. That's kind of all I've got for you today. Just recapping some of the crazy things that we saw. I'll give you a hot take and then I'll give you like this much betting advice at the end. Again, want you guys to kind of want to be involved in that. Get in that betting group chat. That's where we'll start for the most betting information. But for now, let's just get into an NFL recap. First and foremost, the Broncos are back question mark they might be as you guys know I am a born and raised Denver Denver Broncos fan and um, it's been rough for about a decade now however Bo Nix had the best rookie quarterback performance in week three Sean Payton finally maybe giving us this much of a glimpse as to why he's the second highest paid coach in the NFL he's had a lot of work to do with this Broncos team in terms of turning things around so we finally got to see some upgraded play calling Bo Nix looked great the run game was a whole lot better um but it's a long season <laughs> it's only week three i'm not gonna let myself get overly excited about the denver broncos because who knows who knows what they'll bring me in week four against the jets might be another shit show might be great i'm not gonna get myself too excited sam darnold Sam Darnold is legit off to a three and O start. If you guys don't know, he is running the Minnesota Vikings offense. JJ McCarthy, who was drafted by this Vikings team from Michigan, uh, got injured in the preseason, had a really good performance in preseason. So really unfortunate to see him go out, but Dear God, I don't know if J.J. McCarthy has a starting job when he comes back. Sam Darnold is lighting it up. Like I said, he is 3-0, and but the Minnesota Vikings are looking good for years to come. If Sam Darnold keeps playing this way and their backup is a talented quarterback like J.J. McCarthy, who's already shown in the preseason that he's got a glimpse of something they can work with, the Vikings are set. So if you're a Vikings fan, I think it's looking pretty optimistic for you at this point in time. Speaking of 3-0, and Justin Fields, hello. Went from being 10 and 28 as a Chicago Bear to now 3 and 0 under Mike Tomlin as a Pittsburgh Steeler. Russell Wilson was supposed to have that starting spot. Ended up having, I think, a calf injury that they've been monitoring. But Justin Fields started because Russell Wilson was injured, and now I'm not sure Russell Wilson, like J.J. McCarthy, has a job waiting for him when he's healthy. Justin Fields looks great, and it shows that coaching matters. But more importantly, it shows that the Chicago Bears may have a lot of work to. Do Caleb Williams, who was the number one overall draft pick, a lot of excitement around him, um, not doing so well. In week three, he went 19 of 34 for 241 yards, which is fine, but zero passing touchdowns and two interceptions. Eerily similar to what we had seen with Justin Fields as a Chicago Bear. Um, at what point do the Bears start to take some responsibility? They seem to be the common denominator. Justin Fields. 3-0 under Mike Tomlin, looking pretty good. Um, couldn't do a whole lot with the Chicago Bears. Now we're watching one of the more talented rookie quarterbacks in the league finding similar issues with this team. So at what point do the Bears take a little bit of accountability? They've had talented uh, quarterbacks leading their offense and haven't been able to do much with them. Coaching matters, and I think it's time for the Bears to take some accountability here. Um, I was hoping, I was really, really hoping and praying that when Andy Dalton, former Horn Frog, Go Frogs, took over for Bryce Young, that he would face similar issues that Bryce Young faced because then we would know it wasn't entirely Bryce Young's fault. Well. Unfortunately, um, the Panthers scored 36 points under Andy Dalton, <laughs> which is about hmm, 23 more points than Bryce Young in the first two weeks of play. Andy Dalton looked great. The Panthers got their first one of the season against the Raiders, 36 to 22. Um, I don't know. This is this is tough. I'm hoping they free Bryce Young from the Carolina shackles. Let him go somewhere else. Let him 
figure out what he wants to do um, and where he wants to be. Maybe this is a Baker Mayfield 2.0 where you just put him somewhere else and he thrives. That is what I'm hoping for Bryce Young, but Andy Dalton did look really, really good. Um, last thing here, Offensive Rookie of the Year belongs to Malik Neighbors at this point in time. Two touchdowns he scored in yesterday's game to help the Giants upset the Cleveland Browns, but that's not all. Neighbors is actually the first player in the NFL to have 20 receptions and three receiving touchdowns in the first three weeks of NFL play, okay? So um, history, that's NFL player in history, and he is a rookie. So good job, Malik Neighbors, you're looking great. And honestly, right now, I'd be willing to sprinkle on Offensive Rookie of the Year for Malik Neighbors. If he keeps going, I think it'd be, it's, it's his award to lose at this point. My hot take, let's get into my hot take, shall we? This episode is gonna be short and sweet, but that's okay, because honestly, we all, um, generation, my generation at least, has the attention span of a young child or a young puppy. It's not really there. TikTok, I think, kind of ruined everything for everybody because we watch a 30 second video and it's on to the next. So we're keeping it short and sweet today. My hot take is that kind of what I talked about with Caleb Williams. The quarterback is not the problem in Chicago, okay? It's coaching. We had many conversations last season, I did with other people, about the fact that Justin Fields just wasn't being set up for success. It was gonna be impossible for Justin Fields to be successful in that franchise with the coaching that was around him. That being said, Brian Flores, defensive coordinator for the Minnesota Vikings is exceptional at what he, what he does. I believe he was an assistant coach for uh, the Patriots for a very long time. Defensive coordinator now with the Minnesota Vikings. And as we know, the Vikings off to a 3-0 start looking not too shabby, um, upsetting some pretty legit teams. So they're looking great. Brian Flores to me would be an absolutely exceptional option for a coach in Chicago. Coaching is the issue in Chicago. It is not the quarterback. We're watching the same thing that happened to Justin Fields happen to Caleb Williams. And you removed Justin Fields from the franchise, you put him somewhere else under a better coach, and guess what? He's 3-0. and So coaching is the problem in Chicago. Brian Flores to me would be a great option. I would love to see it because I do think there's a lot of potential with the Chicago team. When you look at this roster, they're exceptionally talented. And again, not able to do a whole lot with it sometimes. And I do think so much of that has to do with the coaching over there. It's time to take some accountability, Chicago. It's not your quarterback. It's your coaches. Finally, my betting education looks a little something like this. As I look at the slate of games from yesterday, my biggest takeaways are obviously things are crazy. Uh, you never want to underestimate anybody this early in the season because crazier things have happened, okay? The, the Panthers, who I thought wouldn't win a game all season under Andy Dalton, look exceptional. Um, in a very close game, the Saints lost, but I am not giving up on this Saints team. They look pretty legit to me. That would be one of my betting tips. Try to avoid fading the Saints as much as possible. Take it from me, I've done it twice. It doesn't feel good. Um, the Broncos back, question mark. Might wanna take that, but more importantly, from a betting perspective, Bo Nix as an anytime touchdown scorer, using his legs, getting in the end zone, has now hit two games this season. It's only week three, so we love that. Despite the Broncos' struggles in the first two weeks, Bro Bo Nix has ended up in the end zone twice, so that's another good bet to maybe sit and sprinkle on. Cleveland Browns, I would say fade them almost all season long. There's some off-field issues going on in Cleveland, as we know, um, and I just don't think that it's gonna click this year. I think they're gonna have a lot of issues. They're gonna struggle, fade the Browns, and also stop betting the Cowboys. I promise you it's torturous. I've done it. I don't like it. It is not fun. So take it from me. It's not worth it. That is your betting info for today. And this is another episode of Let Me Live. Like I said, we're keeping it short and sweet today. We've got a recap. We've got two Monday night football games tonight. Um, and we've got that Live Moods betting group chat. So please get in that group chat on the Baller Alert Instagram. That way you and I can be in touch. We can communicate and we can have some fun. Appreciate you guys for hanging with me. This is another episode of Let Me Live. I'm your host, Live Moods, and we will see you soon.